The Vivo 5R is Blue's latest smartphone. For $200, you get a 5.5 inch HD display, an octa core 1.3 gigahertz processor with three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal memory, 13 megapixel main camera, and eight megapixel selfie camera, fingerprint scanner, 4G LTE, and Android 6.0 Marshmallow. So a couple of those buzzwords are $200, three gigabytes of RAM, and fingerprint scanner. There's clearly some bang for your buck present here with this device, there usually is with blue devices. All we need to do to get inside this box is slide off the top, no cutting or tearing required. We're gonna see the Vivo 5R sitting right on top, which I'm gonna set off to the side for now. The first accessory included in the box is a micro USB charging cable. Notice how I said micro USB and not USB type C. That's a bit of a bummer to see the somewhat outdated cable here. There's a USB to micro USB adapter included as well, a fast charging wall wart and a pair of earphones with removable tips and music playback buttons. Believe it or not, we're only about halfway through the contents of this box. There is a SIM card removal tool, some literature like a SIM card installation guide and quick guide, a silicone case for the Vivo 5R, and a screen protector as well. Wow, lots of goodies. Now the Vivo 5R is covered with plastic. There's plastic on the front of the device, there's plastic on the rear, and there's more plastic on the front. Once that is removed though, we can view the build of the Vivo 5R and it resembles the Pure XL in a lot of ways. There's an aluminum battery cover that is cool to the touch, but almost feels like plastic. Whether that's because there's a thick coat of paint on the cover or if there's very little metal being used, not entirely sure. The metal frame is however undisputably metallic of origin. The Vivo 5R features a 5.5 inch 1080p LCD display, so it's not AMOLED, which is something that I immediately noticed upon booting up the phone. But upon closer inspection, the display has good viewing angles and can get pretty darn bright. I'm coming from a Samsung Galaxy Note 7, so the display doesn't look very saturated or vivid, but for $200, I don't think it's too bad. I mentioned earlier, this device comes equipped with an octa-core processor with three gigabytes of RAM, while most flagship smartphones feature four gigabytes of RAM, some even six, three gigabytes of RAM is still a lot and is the amount in most flagships of 2015. So it's no surprise the phone feels pretty darn snappy. I can switch between applications quickly without much delay or stuttering. Now there is a custom skin on top of Android Marshmallow and it's a bit funky for those coming from stock Android. The notification panel slides down from the top, but it does not contain any quick settings. Instead, the quick settings slide up from the bottom of the phone. This is where you can change the brightness and whatnot, access the, the quick settings like I mentioned earlier. The layout works, I think, but it's a bit unorthodox. The fingerprint scanner on the rear works pretty well too. In my experience, it detected my fingerprint, I would say nine out of 10 times without any issues whatsoever. On the rear of the device, we'll find a 13 megapixel camera sensor with an f2.0 aperture and phase detection autofocus. There is an eight megapixel front facing selfie camera. You can capture some pretty decent low light images with the sensor thanks to the wide aperture. The high megapixel count will retain the quality of cropped images, but that is kind of pointless if the camera is garbage. You can be the judge of these images. These are sample images. Let me know your thoughts in a comment down below. One big bummer about the smartphone is that it features rear facing speakers. You know, even Apple has addressed the speaker placement with their latest smartphone. So there's no excuse why the speakers on this phone or any phone should face outwards against the palm of your hand when holding the device. That is the case with this smartphone, but to be fair, you know, this speaker is not terrible. It's crispy and it doesn't get too distorted at high volumes when compared to other budget phones, but still it could be better. We do have a 3150 milliamp hour battery under the hood with quick charging support. I haven't tested this phone long enough to really come to a conclusion on the battery life performance, but I see no reason why it wouldn't last a full day with moderate usage. So this is the Blue Vivo 5R. For $200, you get a heck of a lot of smartphone and one that gives the Moto G4 a run for its money. If you are at all interested in the Blue Vivo 5R, I'll leave a link to visit the device on Amazon down below in the description. If you guys have any questions, let me know in a comment down below. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this budget smartphone. As always, guys, I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.